The Cars Tour and Late Model Stock Cars were back in action for the first time in 2024, and I think they put on a pretty good show. It wasn't the best show we've seen, but it was a pretty, pretty solid race for the most part. Before we get to this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at John Trent Racing. As I addressed in a previous video already, there was some drama before the race even started. The car store decided to only field 30 cars for the race. That left some of the biggest names in the car store all out of the race, including Stephen Nassie, Landon Huffman, Jonathan Finley, and Cody Dempster. For whatever reason, the car store chose not to allow them to race. They did not get in on time. And I believe that Finley and Dempster were uh, were out of luck because we had two cars, Jacob Hefner and Buddy Isles, were able to get in on provisionals. That kicked out uh, Dempster and Finley, who would have gotten in on time without those provisionals. So I guess I guess 28 cars uh, were going to start and then the two provisionals. Uh, but Landon Huffman and Steven Nassi did not have enough owner points from last year to uh, qualify for the race. So obviously a little bit of drama going on uh, there. Uh, and then uh, for the most part, there wasn't a lot, there, there was good racing, good action, but there wasn't a lot of drama. We did have this little bit here at the very beginning of the race between uh, Carson Quaffle and Deke McCaskill. Let's take a look here. Uh, you can see Carson kind of drives up and over right there. Deke, uh, Deke's left rear quarter panel. And then Carson expresses his displeasure with Deke trying to block him there uh, because Deke did try and come down, shut that door when Carson was already there. Uh, but uh, fortunately for Carson, uh, that wouldn't really affect him as he would eventually come home the winner. Uh, following that, we had some pretty good racing. Brent Cruz led for much of the race. He was kind of just gapping the field. He had about uh, half a straightaway at lead, I believe, over um, Chad McCombie for the most part. And then uh, we had a like, like that. They had their like competition caution, which I don't even understand why they're doing these competition cautions. And frankly, I think the Cars Tour needs to get rid of the competition cautions. I think they're utterly stupid and pointless. The only point of them is to re rack the field and get a restart. Uh, and in this case, uh, it was utterly stupid because with uh, 35 laps to go, uh, we were actually getting a really good race. Brent Cruz was getting, uh, got caught up behind Buddy Isles, who was really racing him really hard, trying to stay on the lead lap. That allowed uh, Chad McCombie to really close in. We were about to get some great, great racing. And then all of a sudden, competition caution. And uh, we're re-racking the field. Utterly stupid. I felt robbed as a fan of the late model stock car division of the Cars Tour uh, that we didn't get to see those guys try and navigate the lap traffic and really get some good racing. It was, uh, it, it, I mean, frankly, it was just really disappointing. And you got to put the blame on the Cars Tour for throwing that competition caution there with 35 laps to go. And then, of course, what happens after a competition caution with 35 laps to go? All the drivers know it's go time. And, of course, we have a massive wreck. Uh, and this was after they had a restart where... Uh, Brent Cruz actually, like, uh, I guess he jumped the start, so they had to re-rack him. And then in the next restart, I, he like missed a gear or something, uh, created a created a pileup. Fortunately, it seemed like everyone was able to kind of get through it. Uh, but then uh, going down into the next, uh, I think into the next turn here, uh, huge, huge wreck with uh, Andrew Grady and Trayton uh, Lapsovich. I think I'm saying his name right. Uh, he basically does what. Uh, Carson Quaffle did to Deke early in the race, just drives up and over uh, the left rear quarter panel of um, Andrew Grady. And then Grady is, I, I think he makes contact with all, and he comes down, hits, hits uh, Chase Burrow, rips off the side of his car, and then somehow ends up uh, back up into the outside wall just out of turn four. Uh, let's take a look here at what happens. So uh, focus in on the left side of the split screen here. It's it's like kind of like really blink and you miss it. So at the very end of the right there, you see it barely. And then we get a better view here with the replay right there. He's already up and over him. And then you can see him kind of coming back down, hits Burrow, and then he's sent right back up into the outside wall there. Uh, just, just brutal, brutal wreck that I think was absolutely unnecessary. Here's a little bit more of it. You can see Lapsovich is already up and over him. We see him come back down right there. 
And then uh, you can see him going back up into the outside wall just out uh, on the backstretch outside of uh, turn two. What did I say? I think I said turn four earlier. I meant turn two there. Uh, so I think that was just completely unnecessary. And I'm going to put the fault on the cars to our officials for that because I don't think we needed that competition caution uh, whatsoever. Uh, we then had a, a really close call here. Uh, unfortunately for Chad McCombe, he had some brake issues. I think a brake line was leaking. He tried to nurse it around the track for a couple laps. You can see we've got 25 laps to go here. So we tried to nurse it around for about 10 laps after they finally got going. And then he almost got clobbered by Cade Brown, who was having some overheating issues. You can see the steam kind of coming up uh, out of the engine here. Let's take a look at what this ha what happened right here. So I don't know if he gets, uh, I think Matt Weaver said on, uh, when he was at the track, he said that Lane Riggs did give him a little bit of a bump, but he, it did look like he was trying to get to pit road. But uh, you can see here, almost, almost takes out Chad McCumbie, who is obviously having those brake issues, really trying to slow the car down, getting to pit road. And then they finally waved the caution here uh, for uh, Cade Brown. Both their days would come to an end. And then this was kind of the last um, real incident here. Butterbean, I don't know if he wore out his tires or what exactly happened, but his car completely like fell off uh, in that last like 20 lap run. And he was really doing his best to try and keep uh, Katie Hettinger and a slew of cars behind him. I don't really know exactly what happened here. I don't think we had a really good replay from Flo. We just got this right here where you can see both uh, uh, Butterbean in that 0 three car and Katie Hettinger in that black car kind of right behind him were already uh, coming off of the wall. It doesn't look like there was too much damage and they're able to keep going, but uh, would really struggle um, with, uh, for butter being there. I'm not really sure. I don't think he would, he would definitely lose out on getting a top 10. And then, um, uh, we got that final restart with about six laps to go. Looked like we might have a good race between Connor Hall and Carson Quaffle, but, uh, Carson Quaffle, uh, really just kind of hit all of his marks and was able to bring it home. And I think he was actually extending his lead there uh, as he took the checkered flag. You can see on the top of your screen what the top 10 was with about one lap to go. It looks like they're all still in those same positions. I don't think we had any last lap passes there. It looks like maybe Logan Clark is passing someone back there. Maybe that's Katie Hettinger uh, outside of the top 10. But you can see here at the top of your screen, Carson Quaffle came home victorious. Connor Hall was second. Dick McCaskill, third. Chase Burrow, fourth. Caden Honeycutt, uh, fifth. Brent Cruz ended up settling for sixth after uh, leading much of the race. I think those tires did indeed finally wear off um, after he was uh, trying to gap the field there. Maybe maybe spent a little bit too much time there. And then obviously he had the uh, restart issues that got him back. Mired in traffic. Never was really able to uh, get back to the front. Mini Tyrell. I was really impressed by Mini. Um, I think his car fell off a little bit uh, towards the end, but uh, through the middle portion of the race, he was really strong, was running up there in the top five, uh, was really, uh, really liked what he, what he, what he did, uh, today was actually using that bumper, moving around, moving people out of the way a little bit and, uh, being really aggressive. So I expect him to have a really good year, um, moving forward. If that is the way he's going to race the rest of the year. And he had a, he had a pretty solid car. Hopefully they improve on that and get it even better. And then we had uh, clay Jones, clay Jones finished in eighth. Uh, had a really good run, really came on towards the end of the race, uh, was really making some hay there towards the back end of the top 10. And then Trayton uh, Lapsovich was able to recover from that wreck uh, with Andrew Grady for a ninth place finish. And then Bobby McCarty, Bobby McCarty finished in 10th. He was the victim of uh, Brent Cruz's uh, missing a gear, uh, had his entire kind of uh, hood smashed in, was blocking his vision. They had to bring him down to pit road. He was able to avoid that huge wreck, fortunately, uh, but uh, got that car uh, fixed. Looking like a modified out there, though. I was able to salvage a top 10 finish. So that is your top 10 there for the season opener for the Cars Tour at Southern National Motorsports Park. Like I said, I thought the racing was pretty solid. There was good racing for throughout most of the race. Uh, obviously, Cruz was dominating for, mo for much of that, but he ended up paying the price for that later on, not conserving all of his equipment. Obviously, maybe with some tire wear off and, and the rest of the equipment there. But uh, I think um, we were robbed of some really great racing between him and Chad McCumbie. Uh, with 35 laps to go because of that competition caution. I think that competition caution completely changed the way this race played out. 
And it's unfortunate because I don't think that's what should have happened. I think we should have stayed green the rest of the way. And hopefully Cars Tour looks at that and, and makes, a, makes a change. Because as a fan, uh, I was really, really disappointed and did not like that uh, Did not like that competition caution. Did not like seeing all those cars get tore up. Um, these guys, is it like late mile stock car racing is expensive. A lot of these guys do this on a shoestring budget. They're working during the week, putting their like, and then working on the cars at night after they get home from their, their day job. They're not doing this full time. And, uh, just to kind of see that NASCAR style competition, caution stuff being played out. I just don't like it. Doesn't work in short track racing. There's no need for it. Uh, I understand it when you maybe are doing something like the Virginia Triple Crown and they have the stage brakes and you can actually go in and make adjustments to your cars. But in this case, they're literally just running around to cool down the tires, making a couple yellow flag laps. It's not like you can go in and actually make wholesale adjustments without losing um, p a position. I mean, some of the cars in the back can do that, but you're usually only really doing that towards the beginning portion of the race, maybe with the first stage break. So maybe you keep that first stage break. You run those first 35 laps. If people want to make adjustments, they can. If they... If they don't, they don't. But having a stage break with 35 laps to go is just utterly stupid and absurd. And it's you get what you get, right? I mean, you get Andrew Grady slamming hard into the wall. I mean, brutal, brutal wreck. Uh, and, and I think that's on the Cars Tour. And hopefully they look at that, make some adjustments. And I also think they need to look at um, their qualifying. I mean, you're sending four guys home. You're sending Stephen Nassie, Landon Huffman, Jonathan Finley, and Cody Dempster home. What for? I mean, why? I think you can run 34 cars. You don't need to be... Just limiting your field to 30. I mean, I get that it shows like, hey, there's competition. You got to be able to actually compete. But I mean, four cars, really? Come on, let them out there. And Buddy Isles, who had an awful qualifying lap, was it had to get in on a provisional. Uh, he was running right there outside of the top 10 at the end of the race, I believe. So I don't know if he was a lap down or not. Uh, the scoring was, it's hard with the flow racing scoring to keep track of all that stuff. But uh, he was running up there and he was able to keep um, Brent Cruz at bay before they got to that competition caution and was making some good hay. So uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I think a lot of the criticism for this race is on how it was officiated, how the rulings were done, but the race for the most part was a pretty solid race. Uh, and I have high hopes for the rest of the season. Let me know what you guys made of this cars tour race here in the comments below.